This is probably the best choice for you to get audio into your stereo system. Let me tell you all about it. Dave Taylor here, and this time I want to talk about high-end audio. Now, I'm not talking high-end audio headphones, though we have a lot of those. I'm just talking about the audio signal itself. And it turns out that the audio signal that you get generally is richer and has more dynamic range and more information than your headphones, your earbuds, your speakers are actually able to reproduce. That's why audiophiles use something called a DAC. And it's a digital analog converter and what it does is it actually makes your music sound bigger, richer and fuller. The problem is, is that good ones tend to be big and tend to be pretty darn expensive. Which is why when IFI actually hit me up and said, hey, we got this new i1, do you want to check it out? I said, absolutely. And as you can see, it's a little guy. It's a third of a pound. It weighs almost nothing. It feels like it's like they forgot to put the circuitry in it. But it's really pretty slick and it does a really great job, particularly if you're trying to hook up Bluetooth to an existing audio system. Although it obviously has a lot more capabilities. So let me go ahead and hook it up and we'll run it through its paces and I'll tell you a little more about its technologies. All right, so we have it all hooked up and what I'm done is I've hooked the i1 up to my audio engine speakers. Great, nice sounding little speakers and they're connected via the RCA output and then I have USB coming in from my computer and then I've also paired it with Bluetooth on my phone and we'll come back to that phone connection in a minute because that's important. But now on the front I want to choose the USB input and then on my computer, I'm just going to go ahead and press play and now you're hearing really nice, rich sound coming out of this and, you know, it's loud. There's a lot going on. Let's pause that. And now let's change inputs and I'm just going to go to Bluetooth and now off of my phone, we'll have the same sort of audio experience. Got a message coming in, that's where that went away for a second, but you can hear a pretty sweet output from an iPhone, right? Now, here's the thing, um, let's pause that. Here's the issue, the issue is that this uses what's called APTX, which is a technology that hooks in with Bluetooth that gives you better dynamic audio range and makes the music sound really good. The downside? iOS doesn't support that, so Apple devices don't actually have APTX. Now your Android phone might well do that, your computer might, but these devices do not. So most of the systems that you can get that are Bluetooth receivers, they just say, oh well, whatever, we'll just use regular Bluetooth audio, doesn't sound as good. But what the IFI Nano guys, what IFI's done is they've said, hey, what if we use AAC? So this little device, very modest little device, actually uses a different compression technology with iOS devices to give you that better quality audio. So it is not APTX, but if you have an APTX device, then this is gonna sound great. If you have an iOS device, it can use AAC instead, super cool. And here's another thing, this works with high-res audio. So this is what's known as DSD-256, but if you have a system that's pushing out high-res audio, this can absolutely work with it. And as a DAC, it also gives you the option, and I'll show you the front here, is you can actually turn different audio filters on. Now, to be totally honest, I can't hear the difference between them, but someone with maybe better ears or with a better audio system can do that. Oh, and one more thing is because I have this hooked up to the computer, it can drive power out of the USB. If you aren't going to have a computer in the loop, like maybe you're going to have this hooked up to your stereo and you want it as a Bluetooth receiver, smart idea, then you'll need some sort of a little wall charger USB cord. So that's pretty easy. It comes with this. Um, the cable's obviously super short. It's not really intended to be 10 feet snaking out of your audio system and into the wall. Easily solved. That's not an issue whatsoever in my book. And the audio quality is just 
great. This really takes music that's like this wide and makes it this wide. That's the job of a DAC. But what they've really done here is they've made this super functional. And for a surprisingly modest price for high-end audio gear, this is a great addition. Even for your TV, you can use this to hook up to the audio system on your TV and now you have better quality audio even with your video games. So think about that next time you hear a little explosion instead of a big explosion. So let me just go through the specs again real quick. So inputs are Bluetooth or USB and it's USB 2 or 3, not USB-C. Those of you on the latest generation MacBooks and other devices, you might need an adapter or a different cable for that. Not the end of the world. Um, USB and SPDIF, never know whether to pronounce it SPDIF or not, um, but it's cool because that particular input circuitry actually uses what's called galvanic isolation. So you get incredibly little noise and chatter, which is really important because you want to hear the music. And if there's no music, you want to hear nothing. You don't want to hear crackling and hissing or any, I, any noise from power or anything. It does all that automatically. Outputs are the RCA jack and the SPDIF, so it can work as an input and or output, which is handy if you're hooking it up to a computer. And the dynamic range, for those of you that understand that number, it's 109 decibels. So that's a lot of dynamic range. That's going to go from super soft to crazy loud. And before I tell you the price, one more thing. Please click the subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel so we can stay in touch. Cool. Now, how much does this cost? How much would you pay for this high-end audiophile DAC? The answer is it's less than you think. It's 199 bucks, and you can pick it up at places like B&H and just do a Google search. There's tons of different places that you can find out about this. And you can also find out more at the IFI website. So, this is Dave Taylor. I'm going to get back to the music, so I will catch you in my next video.